Hello, everyone. So I'll be talking about uh, automated model building of carbohydrates. First, I'm going to tell you about why carbohydrates are important. They can have um, many different roles. For example, as polysaccharides, they can serve as structural components, such as in cellulose. Uh, they can also be energy storage, for example, starch and glycogen. Protein glycosylation has, uh, has a role in recognition processes in the cell, in cells such as uh, in viral infection, cancer, fertilization, and immunity. And as ligands, they can also have biotechnological applications, for example, biofuels and food. Uh, and food. Now I'm going to make a few points uh, about modeling carbohydrates and the carbohydrates in the PDB. About 10% of all structures in the PDB contain um, ligands or glycosylation, and about 5.5% of all structures can contain N glycosylation in particular. However, carbohydrates in the PDB commonly exhibit nomenclature and conformation errors, and also the median resolution for glycoproteins is lower than that of non-glycosylated proteins. Also, most software is aimed at non-glycosylated proteins. And the, the reason for this is that uh, carbohydrates are difficult to model because um, they're disordered, they're flexible. Glycosylation is often exposed to solvents and it's not encoded in the, in the genome. And also carbohydrates can have um, complex conformations as stereochemistry and they can be branched. As, and as you can see here, this is an example of a branched carbohydrate. And when comparing it to a pe peptide backbone, um, it's not possible to, to have a backbone the same way we have with proteins, which makes carbohydrates more difficult to model. In addition to that, um, branch carbohydrates can be even more complex with multiple branching points, which further complicates modeling them. Another, another thing to consider is that um, sugars can exist in multiple forms. For example, this is fructose in its open chain form, and it can form those furanose forms and these pyranose um, forms. And the way the PDB stores ligands is by assigning them a three-letter code, and all of the, uh, which means that for one sugar, we need up to five codes for each of the forms. As I said, carbohydrates can uh, also have uh, complex conformations. Here are examples of furanose conformations um, where both of these conformations are quite strained. Um, and in the case of pyranoses, again, most conformations are strained with uh, both being a little bit less strained and the, the least strained conformation is chair. The reason for this is that the substituents in the tear conformation are staggered, which minimizes repulsion be between them, while in all other conformations, substituents are eclipsed. All of this leads to the following problem. While at high resolution, it's easy enough to distinguish the sugar and its conformation, as the resolution decreases, only the we can identify the sugar, but not the conformation. And at low resolution, we can identify neither of those. And this is also the case with cryo-EM. And in order to solve these issues, we are proposing SAILS, which is software for building carbohydrates from electron density and electron potential maps. It works for glycosylation and ligands. It will be integrated with GUIs such as CCP4A2, CCPM, and CUT, and its algorithm involves fingerprinting. The fingerprinting in cells is similar to human fingerprinting, where um, a fingerprint has ridges and empty spaces, like you can see here. And um, the same way sugar fingerprints have places of high electron density and places of no electron density. And much like we can have a database of human fingerprints, we can also have a database of sugar fingerprints. And this is what cells uses. The fingerprint database contains 
one um, fingerprint for each sugar. Um, these fingerprints are generated by superimposing sugars in their minimum energy conformation. And um, you can see an example of a fingerprint here. High probe points are placed on each atom where the electron density is high, and low probe points are placed in the voids where electron density is empty, like you can see here. Each of these fingerprints is scored against the map, and the one with the highest score is selected and placed in the map. And as our group has been expanding and we need to work on cells as a team, we have been moving from its old software architecture that you can see on the left to the new software architecture that you can see on the right, uh, because the new one is simpler and more maintainable and just easier to collaborate on. And this is an example of uh, detecting sugars with cells. Here you can see a few options for an arabinose. If you can see in blue is the correct one from the deposited model, and in green are the ones detected by cells, which are quite close. However, as I mentioned, at low resolution, it's difficult to determine what sugars we have. And in order to solve this, um, we have an idea to use information from glycomics databases about what sugars we can have on our protein. The challenge with this is that all, the, all of these glycomics databases have their own languages and they, they all serve different uh, purposes. However, there's the gly 2 can repository, which takes information from these databases and converts it to uh, the works no nomenclature, which is similar to um, IUPAC, but it's, it, but it's used for sugars. And uh, what we're currently working on is getting our software like Cells and Private Air to work with the works nomenclature so that then we can access all of this information stored in glycan databases. Uh, and now I'm going to tell you more about Privateer, which is a, a software for sugar validation. It has several tools for spotting errors, such as it generates a mid-density maps. Um, it calculates real space correlation coefficients for each monosaccharide. Um, it has ring puckering conformation, stereochemistry and nomenclature checks. And it generates SVG diagrams for glycosylation, which um, makes, um, which makes uh, spotting linkage errors easier. It also uh, generates SIF libraries with unimodal torsions, which can then be used in Qt and RefMac to correct and verify the structure. It's currently integrated in CCP4i2, CCP4MG, and Qt, and soon it will be coming to CCPM as well. Um, in order to do this um, ring puckering and confirmation text, Privateer uses the kremer popple algorithm, which is an algorithm that um, uh, tells us about um, how much, um, which atoms and how much they move away from the mean ring plane, like, like you can see here. And um, we can use this to judge whether the confirmation and the puckering of a sugar are correct. And here you can see um, a plot of the angles calculated by the kramer popov algorithm on the left for furanosis, where we only have one angle phi, and for pyranosis, where we have the angles theta and phi. And also, we use information um, of, that we have uh, on restraints and coordinates uh, stored in dictionaries. Um, but the problem is that the dictionaries that are currently used by, um, that are currently in the CCP4 monomer library, um, then uh, th the ones that are regarding sugars are uh, often incorrect. And we're working on regenerating them. Here you can see a comparison of different dictionary generation programs. Um, Great Mogul and Elbow Mogul are considered the gold standard, but we've chosen to use ACE drug because it gives comparable results. And uh, it's freely available with CCP4. Um, so as I said, we are currently working on generating new dictionaries for all sugars with ACE drug. 
and these are the ones we have generated so far. This is a structure I re re refined with the new dictionaries and there is a slight improvement um, if you compare it to, to the current RefMap dictionaries and the new, the ones that I generate. Now I'm going to show you how to correct an, um, a structure automatically with private code and RefMap. First, I'm going to show you a high resolution structure where confirmations are likely the result of modeling errors um, unless an enzyme is involved. This is the CCP4I2 interface where in the validation and analysis, we can see private here. This is the private here interface. Um, we select our model and our reflections. There are a few settings that we can change. For example, the expression system and the way we want um, our results represented. And then we run private here. And this is the report that we get. This is, um, shows us if the, in green is the correct confirmations, in red cross are incorrect confirmations. This is the SVG diagrams of glycosylations, where again it says for each sugar if it's uh, correct or incorrect. And we have a table with all the results where we can again see if there are any problems detected. Then we can run CUT. And in CUT, we can see that um, the confirmation of the sugar is clearly incorrect. There is a wrongly model, modeled water here which is causing the error. So we delete the water. We correct the confirmation. Then we flip the sugar. And then we refine it with uh, the restraints generated by private uh, We can uh, move this OH group to fit the electron density better. And then we accept the refinement and the confirmation is not, has, and the sugar has now been corrected. If we run private here again, we can see that all of the sugars are validated as correct. Um, now I'm going to show you a lower resolution structure where um, even a correct, correctly built model can still be distorted after refinement. And here you can see a high energy confirmation has been created. and we refine it with private restraints and now it has been corrected. Uh, finally, when there are no modeling errors, no serious modeling errors, we can just refine a structure with 10 cycles of RefMAC using private um, torsion restraints. Here you can see before we refine the structure, we have a few incorrect sugars, but then after we run RefMAC, um, we can see that all of the sugars have now been corrected. Um, we ran privateer on all N glycosylated structures solved with X-ray crystallography in the PDB. And here is a plot of each sugar, of the conformation of each sugar um, versus the resolution of the structure. These sugars, um, Blue, uh, shown as blue crosses and their confirmations should ideally be 4C1 because it's the lowest energy confirmation, while all sugars shown here with um, yellow triangles should be in 1C4 tests. All of the confirmations that are different from, from these um, are incorrect and you can see there is still um, 3 to 16 percent in the 0 to 6 re angstrom resolution um, yeah. incorrect confirmations and like it's 
and it, the percentages are even higher at even lower resolution. Then we did the same plot for cryo-EM. And here you can see that at the higher resolution for cryo-EM, um, three to 4% of the um, sugar conformations are incorrect. Currently, new structures are normally delivered in this resolution range, which shows that actually um, they are improving. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, carbohydrate representation. This is the simple nomenclature for glycan representation, where each sugar is shown by a symbol. And glyco blocks is a feature of CCP4MG, where these symbols are taken and represented in 3D. Um, and here you can see an example of a carbohydrate ligand shown in glyco blocks. These um, lines here re represent hydrogen bonding. Um, finally, um, just to summarize, sugars are difficult to model. Um, high energy conformations are quite uncommon, um, but errors in modeling and refinement do, make, do produce them artificially. Um, Sales uses a database of sugar fingerprints to build models to overcome this and private here can be used to restrain sugars to their minimum energy conformation. In the future, I'm going to work on, on cells to um, generate um, all of these dictionary entries I told you about and then use them to expand the fingerprint database. Um, I would like to thank our collaborators and our funders and also John Aguirre's research group and all of these people for their support. Thank you.